because right now I think there's a lot of people just hopping on the bandwagon of what's popular, you know, oh, well, everyone listens to rap, I guess I will too, and they don't really give other genres a chance. And I hope people kind of start to see that there's other music too that is just as good, if not better, than what's on the radio right now. There's a company that reached out to me a few months ago. It's called Chart Cipher. They use AI and they compile trends. Rock has moved up from 12% to 19%. That's a 58% increase. Hip hop is down 37%. Change. You wanna be, wanna be a natural like me, cause the rock and roll queen is what I'm gonna be. I'm from the older generation, so we get a little excited when we hear about the new generation who are enthusiastic about rock, rock music. <laughs> Well, thank and... you so much. Thank you for having me on. So my name is Sierra Levesque. I'm 18, almost 19, and I'm based in a small town called Pembroke in Ontario, Canada. I uh, just recently graduated high school, and I'm doing my first year right now of Berkeley Online. I'm taking a Bachelor of Arts in Songwriting, so it means that I get to do music all day. I do all my school online, and then once that's done, I work on my own original songs, recording here in my home studio. I perform at all different places. Last night, I had a three-hour show a few towns over. And then the night before that, I actually sang the national anthem for an NHL game. I do that a lot as well. So I kind of do so many different things. Um, I play guitar, piano, drums, bass, and my main thing is singing and songwriting. But yeah, right now I'm just trying to get my music out there. I have two original songs out on all platforms. And I also released a Christmas song. So if anyone likes Christmas music, check that out. And uh, yeah, it kind of all started for me back around the age of three when I was doing musical theater. Because my parents heard me singing along to an Avril Lavigne song back then. And they said, hey, I guess she likes music. So they put me in musical theater. I was in Annie. Um, I was in a whole bunch of musicals, and from there, I kind of made a decision around the age of seven to start learning instruments, and um, I quit musical theater at 11, so you never know, maybe I'll end up doing that again one day, but at that time, I decided I wanted to work on my own music and start performing places on my own, so that's what I did. Ever since the age of 11, I've had about, mm, I would say the average would probably be 40 to 50 shows a year. I perform really anywhere I can get, and that's luckily taken me all the way across North America. I've had the chance to perform in um, North Carolina, New York City. Um, where else? Shoot. I'm performing in Chicago very soon, actually opening for Bumblefoot and his band Art of Anarchy. Um, my favorite place to perform has been Los Angeles, so I got to perform at the Whiskey Go-Go twice, which was so great. Amazing, legendary venue. And just hoping to continue building my uh, repertoire and performance book uh, as much as I can. So that's kind of a rundown about who I am. And every day I'm just always working on something new. So definitely grateful to have the mentorship of Bumblefoot. Amazing. Like you've done all these things. You've gone to all these places already. How is it that you're so motivated? Um, it, I, I'm assuming your parents are 100% behind you and supporting you. Where did you get the inspiration to do what you're doing? Yeah, well, my parents are definitely the biggest part of my support team. I actually have my dad, my mom, and my stepmom. So I have three parents. And I'm an only child. So it's kind of all the all the parent love and support goes to me, which is so great. So they take me everywhere, all my shows. But yeah, it first started, I would say, when I was really young, I would grow up with my dad listening to 80s bands um, anywhere we would drive. We like to travel a lot, go on car trips a lot. So we would listen to Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, um, Metallica, Bon Jovi, Ozzy, Black Sabbath, all those bands. And I actually liked them so much that I used to fall asleep to the really, really loud music. So I kind of like to say that it's like ingrained in me a bit. And I always loved Axl Rose. He was one of my first like rock stars that I really looked up to. And so... Uh, when it came time to decide between musical theater and going my own music way, I knew I wanted to be in rock for sure because that's just what I listened to growing up. And ever since then, I've always loved just all the bands that my dad loved. I've kind of taken them on myself now. And 
I usually like to set a few goals for myself each year. And that's also what keeps me going throughout the year. I always do everything with that specific goal in mind. So my recent one was releasing music and I've been doing that. So yeah, I just, I would say it all started with Guns N' Roses was one of the main bands. And from there, I've just found even more rock bands who I love. My favorite band who I found myself um, is Ghost, more of a modern day rock band. So yeah, I just really love them. And I love Iron Maiden, Ramstein, um, Metallica, Megadeth, a whole bunch of them. But yeah, I just say that rock is kind of in my blood. Doesn't mean that one day, hey, maybe I won't release a more pop song or anything like that. But rock is my main thing for sure. I've discovered in Japan, there are a ton of all girl bands, in fact, too, that are performing uh, their own metal music. You're probably familiar with some of them. Have you heard of uh, Bandmaid or? Um, I'm not sure. But I knew know Lisa X and she's yeah. there and she's been doing a lot of stuff. So, yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah, Lisa X, I've reacted to one of hers. I'm actually thinking, wow, there's there's a bit of a trend going on here. Have you seen that? Have you felt that? Um, yes, I have in general. I live in a small town, so unfortunately the, the music tastes here are a little bit different than other places. Here it's mainly country, um, and unfortunately I'm not into country, so haven't really felt the love for rock yet here. But um, yeah, a lot of my friends my age really love hip-hop and modern-day rap, but a lot of people in other areas of the world I can see are definitely moving back to rock. It's kind of like a nostalgic thing too. People like going back now and seeing like the old videos. I even know on TikTok, there's a lot of people my age who like now dress up as if they're in the 80s, which I think is so cool because I found so many people. It's like, oh my gosh, I want to be your friend. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I think it's definitely making a comeback. And that's just kind of my main goal is to help bring rock back to the forefront. And I know that a lot of people especially younger people who I've talked to about it, when they hear rock music, they think really long solos, screaming, they think like really loud riffs, and they just think that's not for me. Mm. So I've tried to kind of, when I'm writing my own songs, put a lot of more pop elements into it, keep that catchiness. If, if there is a solo, really short and memorable like it used to be, you know. Um, and I'm even going to be experimenting with putting some like hip hop beats but to rock music, just trying to see what resonates. And so far it's been going good. People kind of see it as like a, a new take on it. Um, and there's so many different versions of rock now too, like all the different sub genres and everything. But I'm really trying to stick in the pop rock area for my own music, just to try and cater to even wider audience. So that's what I've seen. I've definitely seen that that is working a little bit more than if I were to be releasing eight minute songs with really long solos because don't get me wrong i love those love listening to that but i think the younger generation today their the attention span is just getting so much lower that after five seconds of a solo they're out so so i'm trying right. my best to kind of bring it back to the basics and see what happens but so far that's been working well so that's my goal to keep on doing that okay that's cool so i get you're giving me a little insight into your songwriting that's really what i wanted to get as well how do you um, approach songwriting? Well, usually there's a few different ways. Um, since I am taking a Berkeley course in songwriting, I've been taught like, you know, the book textbook way to songwrite, you know, taking stuff, inspiration, and then following procedures. But when it comes to just myself without any of that, usually I hear a melody or a lyric and I pick up a guitar or piano first. And usually I'll just write a random guitar riff or piano melody, and then I'll put whatever my idea was to that. Unless the idea is very specific with a sound already, that's usually what I do. So for my past few songs, I've written a piano melody and then lyrics to that, or a guitar and then lyrics to that. But sometimes I'll just hear a word and write it down, or hear a little melody and record it in my voice notes, and I have thousands of them now. So anytime I'm going to start writing a song, I go back to one of those and that's usually a good place to start. So I would say it mainly comes from those areas, but there's also the textbook way, which has helped. I've written some pretty cool songs that way as well. So for me, it's not one specific way, which I like because I don't really get writer's block too often, but yeah, I, I've just been writing as much as I can. And I have around 40 songs fully written right now with 23 fully recorded and counting. So yeah, just trying to get my 
repertoire as much up as I can. Cool. So do you do uh, your own production work with Logic or Pro Tools or something? Yes. Yeah, I record all my stuff uh, into Logic, and then I send all the stems to Bumblefoot, and he and I mix it virtually on Zoom like this, and he does everything through Cubase, so I kind of watch his screen and learn that way. But soon I'm going to be also learning how to do Pro Tools, so I'll have knowledge on two different ones, which is good. So yeah, that's usually what I do. And uh, it's kind of like co-producing, but it's been working out really great. And I really enjoyed, especially through COVID, learning about how to record myself. That was my big project. So I'm happy that I did it. Mm. And uh, just tell me a little bit, You are you have you been living in Pembroke your whole life now? Yes, I have. Yep. Born here, raised here. And uh, how, what's the population? Um, The total population of just Pembroke, I think is around 15,000. But then there's all these different surrounding areas. So in total, I would say it's about 100,000, but just with all the surrounding areas. So Pembroke itself, pretty small and not too many uh, music venues here. So all the venues that are here, I've played many, many times. And I am lucky to have a lot of community support. But yeah, the main drummer here is country. So there aren't really many other rock musicians here. Interesting. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there was two questions I wanted to get to. One of them was... uh about a band do you have a band or or what's the deal um, there right now i am the band that's what i like <laughs> to say yeah right now when i perform live i actually record all my other instruments so drums bass piano background vocals and i play guitar and sing on top of the backing track of myself performing so it's like you're hearing all of me you just can't see all of me uh so that's what i do right now and that's been working out great because it's easy to travel with no one's arguing with me no one's mad, <laughs> no other band members. So just myself. But the goal is hopefully someday to have a backing band that I can easily move around. Uh, that's the goal. But yeah, right now it's just the one woman thing I've got going on. Cool. Cool. And the other question, <clears throat> excuse me, the other question I had was about growing up in Ontario. Surely you're conscious of, of other uh, famous singers from Ontario, even uh, of course, Avril Lavigne, you've already mentioned her um shania twain the uh, she came from timmins i think and that was a tiny little northern ontario town so uh that's interesting that you're in a smaller town because i'm sure if you moved to toronto um you'd probably be overwhelmed with the amount of musicians that are floating around over there do you, do you plan to eventually relocate somewhere Yes, one day it's my absolute goal in life to live in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's like my favorite place ever. I go there for NAM, the NAM show, and I go there for concerts and all that. So that's kind of like my second home in my mind. But yeah, one day it's my goal to live there. And I already have so many friends there, so many music connections. So through Berkeley, actually, I might be able to do some internships each year at different companies. And I'm hoping this summer to do an internship in Santa Monica at a music company that does music for um, TV shows, film. So that's just hopefully going to give me a little taste of what it may be like. But that's my goal one day, hopefully. <laughs> Excellent. And um, as far as uh, your guitar playing, um, how much practice do you get in during an average week? Yeah, I would say it just depends on what I'm doing. This week specifically, I've been doing a lot of recording. So I've been using the guitar mostly for my own songs. But on weeks where I'm practicing for a post that I'm going to do with a solo or anything like that, I'm trying to write a solo. It can be a lot because I am kind of, I have like a little bit of OCD in my brain. So <laughs> I need it to be like perfect and I feel stressed until it gets that way. Um, but yeah, and especially having Bumblefoot as a guitar teacher, <laughs> it's always a big inspiration to even come close to any of his playing. So anytime that I'm working towards something, I'll sit here until it's done and that can be up to a lot. So yeah, I, I've been really like flip-flopping with guitar. Sometimes I'll be posting solos on Instagram. Sometimes I'll just be using acoustic for a song, but yeah, I just love that it has so many uses. So guitar is probably my favorite instrument. Cool. Yeah, me too. <laughs> You're into performing. You have no problem going on stage. Um, and performing in front of people. Well, I wouldn't say no problem. I think even the most famous people still get butterflies before a big show, eh? 
yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it depends. Usually if it's a smaller one, I, I know my music enough that hopefully I won't mess up. But yeah, the bigger ones at new venues are always just a little bit. You never know what's going to happen. But once I'm on stage and singing, usually I'm all good. Mm -hmm. And you're probably not into this idea. I don't know. I mean, I, I mentioned the old girl band, but is that something that you'd ever considered that maybe your band would be all female or... Does yeah, I definitely matter? have considered. Right now, it's just looking for musicians who are all equally as dedicated. Right now, I'm not specifically looking for all girls because there's so many great ones, as you mentioned. But, you know, if that were to happen, that would be great, too. I mean, I really love if I could have my dream set up for a band, it would be something like Ghost. Probably not with the all masked thing, but I love the fact that all the members are kind of interchangeable. You don't have to put out a press release if one leaves or if you get a new one. Um, I just love that kind of anonymous vibe. So right now it's just looking for musicians who are all equally as dedicated. And hey, if they're boys, girls, whatever works right now. I just had a show last night with a um, boy guitarist. He was really great. Um, just kind of testing out the waters there. But yeah, at the moment, it's just looking for really anyone who is willing to put in the work. So if that would be all girls one day, hey, that would be great. But I'm not specifically trying to build that right now. So we'll see what happens in the future. Cool. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, because again, um, I have children who are your age. So um, so I'm definitely, you know, a dad kind of thing. <laughs> Big difference in generations. But I have a lot of respect for for your generation upcoming. And, and in fact, that you're inheriting a, a horrible mess that... Uh, well, not my generation. I'd say it started even before my generation. A lot of uh, a lot of difficulties. Um, what is your sense of hope for the world? For um, for re your your future career? What are your hopes for your generation? For the all the big changes that are going on in the world? How? What are your hopes? My main hopes right now, I'd say, are to use the technology that we have because that's been working out great for everyone. Um, I'm not sure about advancing technology because it's getting crazy sometimes with AI and stuff, but especially with just social media, um, to continue finding new artists there. I, I see how TikTok's been the new trend of that's where all the new artists are. And I think that's really cool because, you know, you don't have to go out anymore and find someone, but I definitely hope it makes it a little bit easier someday for even more artists to be found because right now it's again more of the pop side of things. So I'm hoping that someday on social media, or I hear that they even might be making a new social media tied in with Instagram that has to do specifically with music, but I'll have to double check that. I heard that a little while ago. Just something where it's a place where everyone can discover what music is best for them easily. That will be my hope for that. And then for myself, my main hopes are to continue releasing music. Um, I'm hoping to release even more music this year, and then hopefully go on tour sometime soon. I've been doing a lot of opening act slots recently so that's been great um but yeah my main goal is to tour with my own music and then just for the generation in general I would say just for everyone to be able to really find the music that they like because right now I think there's a lot of people just hopping on the bandwagon of what's popular you know oh well everyone listens to rap I guess I will too and they don't really give other genres a chance so I really hope that that becomes even better soon because you know, rock again is kind of hiding beneath for a lot of people, but mainstream, I hope people kind of start to see that there's other music too that is just as good, if not better than what's on the radio right now. So that's all my hopes. And I probably have so many more, but <laughs> those are my my main ones that I can think of right now. Those are, those are good hopes. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I have to react to some of your music. I'm actually going to do a reaction video. Oh, okay, what, thank you. What song should I react to? Hmm, well, I just released actually a music video. So that one has a music video with it called Wrong About You. But then do you know Machine Gun Kelly? Mm -hmm. Well, he was a rapper who turned into a so-called rock star. I'm not sure. Do you like him? Like, I would have to hear it. I don't know him off yeah. the top of my head. Okay, yeah. well, anyway, he's a, he's a rapper who turned into a rock star. And he started dissing a whole bunch of people in the rock community. And I thought, you know what? No. This is time for someone from the rock community to stand up. So I actually wrote my own diss song <laughs> for Machine Gun Kelly called Get Off My Stage. And that was my first song that I ever released. So it depends on your mood. That one's a little bit more, uh, you know, diss track vibe. And then my next song that I released 
that has a music video is called Wrong About You. And that one's about kind of having to leave a friend behind who you thought was going to be there for you. So it just depends on your mood. I have two songs. So, hey, if you're ever feeling like you want a diss track, get off my stage. And if you're feeling like you want a more vulnerable song with a music video, Wrong About You. Okay, good choices. Thank you. How did you manage to get singing in a in an NHL game? How did that happen? Yeah, uh, well, when I was 12, the Ottawa Senators NHL team put out a call saying that they're looking for new anthem singers. And actually, it even started before that. In Pembroke here, we have a hockey team called the Pembroke Lumber Kings. And I started singing the anthem for them when I was eight. So it was just kind of a fun opportunity just Canadian, obviously, whenever I started. And so from 8 to 12, I was just singing for them a lot. And when that senator's call came in, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go. So we went to Ottawa, and I had to sing both the American and Canadian for the uh, audition. And then from there, they got me to sing for the AHL team for the senators. And then ever since then, so for six years now, almost seven, I've been singing for the senators. And I get probably around... I would say three to five games a season, which has been great. This season, I've already sang three times. And mostly, they use me for the American and Canadian games. And I just love the American anthem as well because it's a bit more difficult. So I always love any chance to do that. And yeah, so it's been quite a few years of any game that I can get, I always sing for. And then that also expanded to singing for a few other teams in Ottawa. I sang for the Ottawa 67's OHL team. And then for the uh, football team called the Ottawa Red Blacks. So I've got to sing a lot of anthems and it's definitely helped me with getting ready to sing for big crowds because I think the most I've sang for now was 24,000 at a football game. And that's just crazy. And then on hockey, usually the, well, not usually, but sometimes the games are televised and that can be up to a million on Hockey Night in Canada. So luckily I've had that chance as well, which is great. And yeah, it's just been a, a great process. And I don't even really get nervous anymore. At first, I was very, very nervous. But just two days ago, that was my, I think, 20th, one, probably my 20th time doing it. I'm not sure. I don't have a great count, but around there. And, you know, just kind of getting used to the process now. So it's great and just love singing it. It's very fun. Yeah, it must, it must be uh, nerve-wracking to get up in front of so many people. It's amazing. Yeah, and just all well the done. attention on you. And if you mess up, then it's really bad. So luckily, I've never messed up, and I hope I will never mess up. But yeah, you know, there's all those anthem fails online that you can look up. But hopefully, yeah. I'll never <laughs> So it's a little bit more nerve-wracking than other shows. But I always just love the opportunity. Yeah, that's great. And uh, your dad, uh, his his taste in music you said really influenced you because you kind of s took it all in you absorbed it like you said um and you listed off all those great bands and um so what what would be your heroes perhaps uh, do you have any specific um specific yeah. idols that you just uh, love everything they do i have a few and i get really excited talking about it cuz i just have so many so main ones, number one, Tobias Forge from Ghost. He is my main one because in the studio for all their albums, he mostly does every instrument. And it kind of reminded me of myself. And that inspires me whenever I'm recording my own music. Hey, you know what? I'm going to do that too. So that's why he's such a big inspiration. Um, so he's number one. Number two for me, I really have loved Anna and Nancy Wilson of Heart. Just great inspirations. And I actually got to perform with Nancy Wilson back in 2022, I got to perform Crazy On You and Barracuda with her. And if you check out the video online, there's a video of me playing the uh, Crazy On You intro for her. And that's probably one of the greatest moments of my life, if not the greatest moment so far. Wow. It was just <laughs> insane. She's so nice. And she actually follows me on Instagram and supports my posts and stuff. So she's so cool. There have definitely been idols for me. I really love Ozzy. Ozzy's been, you know, just like... It's we're getting pretty sad there when he's getting older because, you know, you just start thinking, oh, no. But I'm glad he's still putting out music and hopefully a new album soon. He's just so great. Always love listening to his music and lyrics. Ozzy's awesome. Um, yeah, I would say for specific individuals, 
Those are the ones I can think of. Avril Lavigne. Yeah, she's been really a big inspiration as well for more of the pop rock side. And just especially being Canadian as well, she's been a great inspiration. Her younger music too really relates to my own music that I do, which has been great. So yeah, um, her. And then uh, just so many bands in general, but I would say for specific people, those are my idols. Axel Rose growing up, I idolized him as well. Just so great, loved his voice and still do. So yeah, I would say those are my main ones, but there's just so many different inspirations to kind of go into the blender for my own music, which is great. So if you hear my songs, you might hear a few different bands and if you like them, then yeah, you'll maybe want to check out the next song. <laughs> yeah, I love Ozzy. I remember in the 80s when he started his uh, solo albums and um, I was, because I knew Black Sabbath too when I was growing up that was around. Although Black Sabbath was kind of like scary, you know, it was a bit, uh, for me, it was a bit, whoa, it's a bit edgy. Yeah. <laughs> but of, of course now, of course, and especially in the 80s, uh, that kind of music became so um, welcomed into the mainstream that people just didn't think twice about really big Marshall sounding guitars and stuff. And uh, so nice that that was all welcomed into the mainstream. But uh, uh, and Ghost too. I have one of their albums too. I don't, too bad I don't have it hey. on my wall here. I have a Ghost album somewhere. I'll definitely react to your music. I'm going to do a video and probably release this and uh, at the same time as doing the reactions. Perfect. And um, yeah, I'm really happy to introduce you to my audience. As you know, uh, a lot of the audience are into prog rock because that was sort of a, a, a going theme for my channel. But actually, Ghost is considered prog rock. And Ozzy is on the verge of prog rock. A lot of pop rock that you mentioned are uh, even Ramstein. You know, yeah. they're all they're all in, they're all influenced by a lot of the earlier '70s prog rock, yeah. which was like you say, long solos and everything. But in the '80s, they kind of figured out, okay, we'll we'll have the same intent, but we'll shrink it down yeah. a bit and just tighten it up a bit. So it's really great that you're conscious of your own generations uh listening habits i think that's a, an important thing uh it's so true that we're, we're have short attention spans and whatnot and i don't know that's not necessarily a great attribute yeah say for for in general so you're you have to be very disciplined to do what you do to learn an instrument to master an instrument um so i admire you for that and really grateful to see and whenever anyone's getting into guitar and all that that's great so anyways, I guess we'll move on and uh, you probably have stuff to do. I'm uh, just <laughs> thrilled to have gotten to know you and hopefully I can uh, expand your audience and, yeah. and encourage people to check out your music as well. If there's anything you wanted to say to wrap up, maybe? For sure. I would just say that if anyone would like to check out my music or anything that I'm doing, I have the same username on all social media platforms, which is Sierra Levec Music. And I'm Sierra Lebec on all streaming platforms as well. So I'd really appreciate your support. And there's so much more coming from me, music, videos, shows. So stay tuned. And thanks so much for having me on the show. Thank you for being on the show. And obviously, there's so much coming down the in the future for you. that You're just started. You're just at the tip of the iceberg, I feel like. You're just, yeah. uh, just you know, you're just you at the start starting gate. That's really good. Thank so. you. Well, yeah, hopefully much more to come soon. Yeah, all the best to you, and uh, we'll uh, keep a, a good eye out and ear out and check out all your music. Thank you very much. I really appreciate okay. that. All right. So thanks for the interview. Thank you so much. We'll have okay. a great day. Thank you. You too, Sierra. Bye-bye. Uh, we have a similar back walls here. I've only got two guitars. You, you've outdone well, me there. but <laughs> like two a few years ago, and it's turned into a bit of an uh, addiction recently. So ah. yes, mm -hmm. it's... But it's a nice background for Zoom meetings and for videos, so at least that's good. <laughs> Perfect. 